everybody, welcome back to Rain and Paws. I'm Mitch, and this is the Dragonfly collab. So this collab is between Lisa Marvin Art, Nikki D Art, Shelley Art, and myself. And we've decided to band together to create some stunning artworks based around dragonflies. So what I'm doing is I'm mixing up my colours here. You can see those on screen at the moment. I've got a whole heap of this little piggy interference colours. I've got Shimmer, Twinkle, Glisten, Macaw, and Comet. I've also got Lemon Sorbet, Sapphire, Nebula, and Galaxy. So the idea is to use these colours to create some stunning interference and shimmery dragonfly paws. Now if you're interested in buying any of the This Little Piggy pigments that are used in this video, you can find those at fluid-art.co, as well as the awesome little mixing sticks that I'm using to stir everything up. So I'm just going through my process here of mixing up my colours, and what I've done is I've put a small amount of uh, Josonia Gloss Varnish in the base of every one of my cups, and about a teaspoon to two teaspoons of pigment per cup. Then I'm going to disperse these in the varnish, and it's a, this is an important step to wet down your pigment so that you don't end up with clumps, and so that you get the true colour of the pigment come out in your final uh, paint. Now I'm adding my untinted house paint. This is the Tormans Neutral Door and Trim in Gloss. That's for here in Australia. In America, the most common one is the Bear 8300. And I'm using my stir stick to stir everything up. And now that we've got that mixture nice and wet, it should incorporate into your pouring medium very, very easily. Um, I don't make up my pouring medium separately uh, when I'm mixing pigments because the varnish used to wet the pigment becomes the varnish used in the pouring medium. Now, if you'd like to learn what my pouring medium is exactly, you can. Uh, I use the one that is in the Shelly Art Bloom course. You can take that course at shellyart.com.au. And if you use the code shellyart 15 mgrimer you'll get 15% off the course. How good's that? So my colours are all mixed, and we're ready to get started. So I have a 24-inch canvas here. It's a, a hexagon. And what I've done is I've put a piece of cardboard in the back to give it some support so the weight of the paint doesn't sag in the middle. And I'm just using my long-bladed craft knife to uh, tape up the back and that will allow any resin drips to come off really nice and easily once we're done. Um, the important step here is to burnish the edges down and I just cut the uh, corners so that I could fold the tape inwards and it's not going to get stuck to my hands all the time. Now everything here is sped up by quite a bit. These videos were incredibly long. There was over 13 hours of footage for this uh, collaboration. So everything is sped up and I'm doing my best to keep up with how fast I'm going in the video. So I've got my canvas on my custom made spinner and the first layer I'm going to pour is the background layer for my uh, dragonfly. And I wanted this to be an iridescent shimmery background and I wanted the dragonfly to be the main central piece. So what I have got is my white British paints house paint as my pillow and I'm just layering on my colours in random order so I'm only using the interference colours. So that's Glisten, Macaw, Shimmer, Twinkle, and Comet. So I've got my cell activator on my swipe tool and I'm just dragging that out over the colours. Now I do apologise that you can't see what I'm actually doing because it is quite bright. Um, that's just how I've got my studio lights set up. And I'm doing a combination of swipes. I've got a bloom in the middle there. I was just using my world's smallest blower to blow that out and I did a couple of scoop and drags just there. I really wanted to mix up the techniques with this one and just have a bit of fun because this is, like I said, the background layer. So again, putting some more colors down. This time I think I loaded them up on the actual palette knife instead of on the canvas first. So I put down my cell activator onto my palette knife, then I put my colors down and then swiped everything out. And now I'm giving that a really good spin to stretch out the design. And I was really, really super happy with how this all turned out. And you will see in the final resin piece uh, just how uh, amazing those interference colours are. Now I wanted to use the duo, uh, this little piggy interference colours for this, so that every time you look at this painting you see something different. And every angle you look at, from, look at it from, you'll see something different. And I think I achieved my goal with that because the final piece is just stunning and it's currently hanging up in my home. So the next portion of the video is making some paint skins. And I've got the Fluid Art Co 61cm by 61cm or 24 inch by 24 inch um, pouring mat here. And this is perfect for making skins on because they peel straight off. So I'm just th going through the colours that I'm using here. I believe I had Lemon Sorbet, I saw Sapphire, Lagoon, Constellation, 
and I'm not sure what else, um, and I'm pretty sure I had all of the duo interference colours here as well. So just layering the colours down, I've got the Sapphire, Constellation, um, that could even be Matisse Midnight Blue, I'm pretty sure that is. And just layering them down over the pillow paint and swiping them out. Again, using a variety of techniques, a variety of different swipe styles to get this pillow covered. The pillow I'm using is the British Paints Low Sheen Exterior in Black. I prefer that one because it's the perfect consistency straight out of the can and it's the deepest, darkest black you can get without having things tinted. I do believe I also have this little piggy galaxy in there as well. So by doing it this way, what I've got is a hope of different swipes, different cell patterns, um, different colours showing up, and that created a whole lot of variation in my uh, dragonfly's wings. So when I'm cutting these out, so I do cut these out on my uh, Silhouette Cameo 4 Plus cutting machine, and I use that to get exactly the same sized uh, wings, exactly the same sized body across all of the different skins that I'm cutting out. So in total, I made four individual paint skins. So this one was for the wings with all of the bright shimmery iridescent colors. The next one that I'm going to pour is for the body. And for the body, I didn't want it to be as interferency and bright because a dragonfly's body is usually not like that as it is compared to its wings. So for this one, I just did a small uh, pour on the Fluid Art Co. I think this one's the 30 centimeter mat. And this one was perfect for a, a skin this size. And just using the same colors, except I didn't use any of the interference colors. So I've taken that off screen to blow that out. And I'm just spinning this as much as I can. And the trick to pouring paint skins is to put on as little paint as possible and to spin as much paint off as you can. Having that layer of paint incredibly thin uh, on the mat is going to mean that it's all going to dry evenly and quickly. And when you go to cut that out, your cutter is going to have no troubles cutting through all of that paint. So I did let my paint skins cure for about two weeks. And this is very important because when you take those off, if you don't allow them to cure, they will stick to, each, uh, they will stick to themselves like cling wrap and you'll never get them apart and you can ruin your paint skins. So now I have um, my white pillow again. I took the uh, skin off this mat and poured this a couple of days later. I have my white pillow and I've got uh, this little piggy harvest gold, this little piggy ore and this little piggy lemon sorbet. And I just used a white cell activator over the top of this, swiped it out and again let this dry and cure. And what I did with this is I had some glitters lying around in my studio so I threw them over the top um, as this was drying. And I didn't really like how it turned out because the glitter was really patchy in some areas and I don't show that on camera. Um, so yeah, that didn't make the cut. And I'm just showing off the beautiful sparkle of those interference pigments here. And now I'm showing uh, the pieces that have been cut out on my silhouette. So I did do a fair bit of jump cutting here because my video didn't record properly. So as you can see, I've got all of my pieces cut out nicely and they're all perfectly sized uh, because I used the one file for my silhouette cuts and just replaced each layer uh, on the mat. So gently peeling away the paint skin from the backing tape and it's very important to peel the backing tape away from the skin not the other way around because if you do it the other way around you can stretch the paint skin and it will deform and not fit nicely onto your pieces. Using a spatula or something really long and thin bladed to get the uh, skin off uh, was really helpful with this as well. Now the way that I'm attaching these to my bottom pieces, so if you can see from the video, I've got some pieces that are solid, and then I have the lacy gold pieces there, the overlap pieces. So I'm just using some Josonia gloss varnish to paint over the um, base piece, and then adhering down the lacy outline piece on top. And it's really important when you're doing this that you make your outlines thick enough that you can grab them, move them, and manipulate them because they're too thin your machine will have trouble cutting through them and you'll have trouble placing them down as well. And I did struggle a lot with this. Luckily, I cut out maybe eight or nine iterations of this just to play around with. And I tried things like super glue, I tried um, Loctite, I tried a whole heap of things. And the varnish was a stroke of genius on my behalf, if I do say so myself, because this will dry perfectly clear. It gives you a couple of seconds to reposition everything. And if you have something in a place that doesn't belong, you can easily pull that up and not worry about um, leaving any marks or odd things on your pieces. 
So I did brush the first one on in sections and decided it was easier to just brush it all on at once. And you can see how much quicker that went now that I know exactly what I was doing. Repositioning everything, making sure everything lines up and making sure all of the skins are laying flat because if they are not, when you go to apply the resin, you will see the lumps and bumps. So that's my two wings done. And now it's time for the body. So you can see I cut the body out of that darker paw that I did second and the wings were cut out of the first paw that I did with the interference colours over the top. And I'm just giving this coat of varnish over the top just to make sure everything is nice and stuck down and it's nice and shiny. And so out of four uh, paint skins I made three pieces essentially but uh, each with two layers. You can see that shining there and those duo colors look absolutely fantastic in person um, with the, this little picky pigments you really can't see how amazing they are on camera sometimes so it's very much a see it to believe it sort of thing so next I'm going to prepare my canvas and what I've done over the last couple of years that I've been doing resin is I have been saving all of the drips in a cup now these drips contain little flecks of glitter some of them are perfectly clear some of them have mica powder in them, some of them have um, you know, mica flakes and pearlescent bits and some have gold. And I saved them all so that I can use them on this piece. And what I'm doing is I've got the first piece that I tried out using all the different adhesives on. And I'm just plotting out on my canvas where I want things to go. So looking at where the iridescent um, background has um, moved looking where those interference colors are laying and what pattern they've made and just trying to figure out what the best way to highlight both those colors and the dragonfly is going to be. And I settled on this orientation and using those interference colors as my guide to place some leading lines. So what I'm doing with these little um, resin drips, I guess, is I wanted to create the look of water droplets on a leaf or on the or water surface like a bubble. And so what I did is I went through and I placed all of these little resin drips strategically um, in a nice swooping line coming down diagonally from my canvas. And then I'm just going to adhere those in the same way I did my skins by using a little bit of the Joe Sonia varnish. So as I'm going through, I'm picking out the bits that look really interesting. So I did choose some that have some refractive gl glitter in them. Um, some little mylar flakes and things. I think those gave a lot of interest because they had little bits of rainbow colour. And I picked a variety of shapes and sizes. Um, I, I lie, I don't, didn't pick a variety of shapes. I tried to pick the round ones. Um, although I do have quite a variety of shapes in there which I've got another plan for. And I'm just putting them in an order that looks slightly random but also like they're meant to be there which is incredibly difficult to do. But I think I managed to nail it on this piece. Now, one thing I wasn't sure of is after applying these to my canvas, is the resin going to make them totally invisible? And it did to a degree. It definitely hid the join for where they are glued to the canvas, but you can still see those 3D lumps um, if you look at the, the picture or the painting from the side. So they do add a little bit of interest and a little bit of dimension to it. So ultimately, I was very happy with this decision. So I'm just moving everything around, making sure it flows nicely. Um, I spent about an hour doing this, to be honest. Um, it was very time consuming, but so worth it in the end. Now that I've done this piece, I've got plenty of other uses for these little fragments. Knowing that they will disappear if you put them in a deep cast resin, it's a great way to use up resin chunks. So I actually had a um, large flat piece of resin that I poured when I resined this piece, and you'll see that at the end of the video and just showing you there what they look like before I glue them down. And so I just grab my brush, I pick up each individual piece and stuck them down. So I fast forward it all through that for you so you don't have to watch it and you can just see the final piece here. Now uh, I was saying that I poured a flat piece of resin and what I did is I cut that up into little chunks into another cup and I will use those in deep cast pieces to create floating shards of glitter. Now I've got my dragonfly piece here and it's time to apply the resin to this baby. Now for this piece, I ended up mixing up 200 milliliters of resin, which was quite a fair bit, and I didn't need 200 milliliters. So for a canvas this size, I think I only needed maybe 120 mils, and with the rest of it, I poured some more drips off to the side. I mixed some glitter into it and uh, just poured them straight onto the silicon mat. Here you can see me carefully wiping down my piece with some isopropyl alcohol and a paper towel, 
and I did this very, very carefully to get rid of any oils from my fingers that may have made their way on there because I was very touchy-feely with everything. And I made sure not to disturb my little dots because I didn't know how strong the varnish would be holding them on. Uh, the Dragonfly is also attached just with the Joe Sonia gloss varnish to the canvas and it's held fast, it's not going anywhere. I also decided that I was going to resin those two little coasters on the side there and the glitter flakes that I'm using for the drips that I'm using my leftover resin for, they are from uh, the Glittered Pixies and I believe I used Medusa Mix. Now mixing into my resin here, I, as you saw I have my respirator there, I've got two sets of gloves on and I am using the Stone Coat Countertop Epoxy. And I'm just mixing that off to the side. Make sure that you, whenever you're working with resin, even if it is low VOC and non-toxic, always use a face mask. Um, I developed some asthma um, after using this a couple of weeks ago, and it's just left me with a lingering cough. So every time I'm using resin from now on, it's with a respirator. Um, I used to not wear it just for the sake of ease of talking, filming videos. It's not worth your health, guys. So now I'm just mixing up my resin here in two parts and it's equal parts A and B for the stone coat, which is fantastic. And I stir this for three minutes. I also add a tiny, tiny amount of um, white refractive reflective glitter. And the brand that I use is Artisu, but it's no longer made. So I did order some unicone uh, white glitter from Amazon and it's basically exactly the same thing. So if you can't get the Artisu, use the Unicone resin uh, pigment from Amazon. I will try and remember to link that product in the description below um, because yeah, it's basically the exact same pigment particle. So now just double checking that there's no dust and little bits of hair which I kept finding their way onto the piece and because it's white, you definitely see it and I'm applying the resin to my coasters first, just so I know that they're all coated and covered and any drips will go onto the dragonfly. And during this time, the stone coat's having a little bit of time to degas and let those bubbles out. And I'm not really fussed on the bubbles coming from stone coat because I know that they will very easily come out uh, with a heat gun or torch. So using my hands to evenly spread everything all over the surface of the canvas and making sure to get all of the sides first. So I wasn't too fussed about the center of the canvas because I know I can easily pour more resin into the middle, but I was concerned about the edges, making sure that they are entirely covered first. And then once I see that they're all done, I go back over the middle and make sure that uh, all the way around the paint skin is sealed in nice and tight because we don't want any bubbles to come out from there and I do believe at the end of this I did have one tiny teeny tiny little portion um, next to the left wing that didn't have resin in it and I was lucky enough that I was able to get some UV resin on the end of a toothpick fill in that little gap wipe it smooth and then set that UV resin and you would never tell there was a bubble there now I'm just going over everything with my heat gun. I'm using an Azito heat gun uh, on the highest setting, which I believe is something like 16, uh, 600 degrees, and it's on the highest fan setting. And that's just to heat the resin up and help the bubbles to disperse and pop easily. And then I go over it with my chef's torch. That open flame really pops any of those super fine bubbles that you may have missed, and just make sure that everything is nice and even. Now when you're torching larger artworks, you and any artwork for that matter, you want to be really close, you, really careful. You don't get too close to the surface because you can scorch it and you'll end up with bubbling, burning and yellowing. So with that leftover resin, I just dribbled it off to the side there, uh, off the edge of a stir stick and I'm making some more of those drips. And I did make the mistake of trying to make one giant drip and it just turned into a puddle. So uh, that's what I ended up cutting up and using for my glitter shards. So whenever you're mixing up resin, you can use it for other purposes if you have leftovers. Some people like to pour them into coaster molds and make extra coasters out of it. Um, I tend to find that I don't have enough resin to do that, to make a whole coaster out of them. So I try to find other ways to use them. I've got little key ring molds, um, I've got a skull, I've got a unicorn, all sorts of things that you can just layer up and every time you've got extra resin, chuck it in there and you've got a really interesting layered resin piece. Um, now I do like using these drips and I've now got two cups full of them 
and uh, like I said, I do have plans to use them, lots of um, insects, and I do want to do an entire series of paintings using this technique and cutting out those paint skins and just creating some really awesome and interesting looking artworks by making the paint skins and cutting them out with my silhouette machine. Now I've just covered this with my um, core flute box to make sure that no bits and pieces get into my finished piece. So I'm super happy with how this turned out and you'll see in a second when I lift this up just how amazing this is. And this part is not sped up so you can see all of that gorgeous shimmer and shine coming off that. And the resin just really brings these pigments to life. So you can see how bright and vibrant they are. And I believe I'm turning off the light so you can see those interference pigments. There we go. Come on, Mitch. Show us the painting. <laughs> the suspense is killing me. All right, so there you can see all of those gorgeous colors changing in the light. And the best part about this is, so we can see a lot of blue from the twinkle there. We can see the gold from the comet and the macaw and uh, a little bit of um, pink and purple in there from the um, uh, twinkle as well. And these were not the colors that I was seeing in person. So the angle that you're looking at the piece from is very um, crucial to what color that you actually see. And I just turned off the other light there so that we're just looking with the ceiling lights and seeing just how deep those colors actually are. So you can see on the wings, there's a couple of little bits sticking out. The resin finish isn't perfect, um, but we're using 3D layers here. So I wasn't overly fussed about that. And I think it lends a bit of character to the piece as well. If you were really concerned about that, you could put another layer of resin on this or even dam up the sides and pour a thicker layer of resin. Um, like I said, wasn't too fussed about it with this one. Um, and it was really a trial to see if this was something that I could do. So you can see the difference between Twinkle and Macaw down the bottom there, how deep um, both colors are. And really, really happy with how this turned out. So as usual guys, if you're liking what I'm doing here, don't forget to like and subscribe. Make sure you check out Lisa, Nikki and Shelly's videos and I'll see you next time. Bye.